I just wanted to read probably the very first verse would be good. And I think there's a lot of information in this chapter 10 that, that sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we get blinders on. Sometimes we wonder why God ain't working in our favor. But this chapter's a good chapter, and I don't know if we'll get it all covered tonight. I don't know if I'll teach or preach or what, but there's a lot of good information here. But the very first chapter, or chapter 10, very first verse says, And when he had called unto his twelve disciples, he gave them the power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Lord, as we come before you tonight, Jesus, Lord, there is none like you. And Lord God, we just ask tonight, Lord God, that you would come in this room with us, Jesus. Lord, this is nothing but a building, Lord God, but in our lives, Lord God, you said you would not dwell in an unclean temple, Lord. Lord God, I just ask tonight, Lord God, let our temple be clean, Lord God, let our vessel, Lord God, be acceptable to you tonight, Jesus. Lord God, that you would move in such a mighty way in this place. Lord God, I ask right now, God, that you would open our minds and our hearts tonight, Lord. Lord God, Jesus, that we would get a hold of you, Lord, and nothing else, Lord. Lord God, that you would begin to breathe on us, Lord God, and give us revelation of who you are, Jesus. Lord, give us a vision of where to take this church. Lord God, give us a vision, Lord, of what souls, Lord God, that we can witness and testify to, Lord God. Lord, I ask you tonight, God, let this word be meek to our soul, Jesus. Lord God, I ask tonight, God, that the chains be broken, Lord God. Lord God, that the ones that sin bondage be set free tonight. Lord, I ask you tonight, Lord, you said for us to speak your word, Lord God, and they would be liberty in it, Lord Jesus. And I thank you tonight, Lord God, that the power that your word holds for us, Lord, they is not like you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible talks about in verses 2, 3, and 4. My God, he begins to name his disciples out. And I'll be honest with you tonight, church, the name, amen, of a disciple ain't what's important. I want y'all to get a hold of that. It's that their name was called, my God, in the name of Jesus. I want y'all to understand that it don't matter if there's 12 men or 12 women. Amen. All I'm looking at tonight is these 12 mouthpieces. My God, that the Lord could use in this. And I I want y'all to take note as we look at this, and I'll do my best. I, I want, I've underlined some stuff I'd like to point out if the Lord, amen, would allow me to point it out or whatever. But I, I, I want to pick it up in verse 5, and they, there's a point, and you know, just give a confirmation as the Lord began to deal with me on this chapter. Uh, I, I don't try to pin up roses on anybody in this church, but just confirmation how how Sister Nikki came to Sister Crystal's house and began to uh, begin to get ministered to. But look at verse five because there's something here. They men, if this don't give you a confirmation, I just don't know what it said. These twelve Jesus sent forth. And commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and to any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go in, it says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. yes. My God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And he said, heal, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, and raise the dead. And cast out devils. Y'all see that? Yes. I mean, we get caught up. We get caught up sometimes in the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sister Karen, we get caught up wanting to make sure that everybody wants to know that we're anointed. Amen. Sometimes we get caught up and we've had this problem with the, with the name cap calling and the ranking of, uh, of where we belong in the kingdom and stuff. But the thing that, that, that the Lord that I've underlined here that really... Caught my eye, and I've, and I've quoted it many times. He said, freely you have received. Yes. 
freely give. Uh, I, I want us tonight to understand what that means. I, I, I want us tonight to, to really get a hold of what that means. When the Lord allows to show you something, amen, it, it never belonged to you in the beginning, amen. It was for you to be able to express. Uh, somebody's going to come around and say, what does that mean? Uh, amen. What does, give me interpretation of it. Uh, amen. And I began to talk to my brother yesterday and we had a long discussion. Amen. And he, amen. And I, he, we, I talked to him. I said, well, the problem is today, amen, that uh, they have some like Aaron's son, amen, begin to give up strange fire. Wow. Amen. And he asked me, he said, will you elaborate on that? He said, I've never understood, amen, what strange fire is. Ooh. My God. And I said, you know, when you don't present yourself before the Lord, I said, them priests, my God, had to bathe before they could enter into the holy place. Before they could enter into the sanctuary, they had, amen, to bathe. They had to put on a certain set of clothes. And today we don't wear a certain set of clothes Amen, so to speak, amen, to be able to speak to the Lord. Our spirit has to be right. Amen, we have to present ourselves. what it says in Romans 12 and 1. Present your body, amen, a living sacrifice, acceptable unto the Lord. Amen, my God, that's the only way, church, we're going to be able to do these commandments that the Lord has given. Amen, and it is a honor Amen. To work under these circumstances. Amen. To work under the anointing. Amen. To work, amen, as as men and women of God and doing the will of the Lord. And I don't even know why I went that way with it, but, but I, I wanted to share that with you. Amen. These ain't keepsakes for you and I. Amen. As the Lord begins to deal, the Lord wants it delivered. We've said many times, amen, what it says in Isaiah. Amen. That he would not send out his word, that it would come back void. Amen. But he would send it out where he sent it, amen. that it would prosper. Right. It would yield fruit. Let me say this to you right now. If you don't understand what that means, my wife puts up fig preserves. And every time I open the pantry, amen, and I see fig preserves, amen, and they ain't no good to me unless the seal's broke. Do you understand? Unless I put a fork in them and get them in them grits. Amen. Or get them in some tomato gravy or something and mix it up. Amen. Then fig preserves is no good to me. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? I can look at them on the shelf all day long. Amen. But they ain't not good to my lips, to my taste buds. Amen. Until I bust the seal. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? And I'm here to tell you tonight this word. Amen. It's going to be fruit. Amen. To somebody. Amen. If we'll bust the seal. If we'll open up the jar and say, will you try some? Will you get a hold of this? Because it's going to be good to you. Amen. And you're going to want another second help. Helping, and you go on a third helping. And by the way, you go on to say after supper, do you mind sharing one of them jars of figs that I can take home? Oh. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Yeah. When the Lord sent us out, He sent us out for purpose, church. Right. He sent us out that His name would be abroad. Amen. That He would get fame, not man. My God, but He would get fame tonight. Y'all getting a hold of this. I want you to look at 9 and 10. It says, Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your perverse purses. Amen. We're not supposed to be worried about a dollar bill. We're not supposed to be worried when the next meal comes. We're not supposed to be worried of, amen, what the next set of clothes we're going to put on. My God, we're not supposed to worry. We're supposed to... Uh, let me back up because I don't want nobody to go and go fire in the morning saying, hey, look, preacher man said I didn't have to pay you tomorrow. <laughs> but what I'm telling you, if you'll get your mind on Jesus yes. and the Great Commission Church, do you hear what I'm saying tonight? Yes. If you get a hold of the purpose, amen, God's always going to provide. Amen, I, I want y'all to see that and get a hold of it. Amen. I know that we work outside. Me and brother, brother Robert works outside. But I'm here to tell you, amen. Though I may be overweight somehow, God 
always makes it where I can make it through the day. Amen. I may be drenched in sweat. Amen. And I may not think for some reason I can make another mile. But let me say this in 21 year olds and 20 year olds that work up beside me. They don't understand why. Amen. I can still get it every day right along with them. Amen. Amen. They don't understand. They thought. Amen. From my age they claim that I'm old because I'm 48. And they, that's what they'll say. I've never seen an old man like you that can work hard as you do. And I have to look at them and tell them I'm not old. I'll work any of you in the ground and two or three of you, amen. Because I'm not old. I got something equipped inside of me. Amen. Because I told them there'll be a day that the Lord will release me from my work and I won't have to do it. But until then, He'll allow me to endure to the end of every work day, church. Hallelujah, I'm just throwing that in for you. I don't worry. I just get up in the morning and I get my job done. And I believe that's what we're supposed to do in this. I got some more things I'm going to share with you. I'm not just talking about me. Amen. But I, I want y'all to see this and get a hold of it tonight. Amen. What the Lord gave this great commission sending out 12 and what the purpose was behind it. Amen. Everybody wants to be a disciple. Everybody wants to be a preacher. Everybody wants to be an evangelist. Everybody wants to be Christian. Everybody wants to do this, but there's a great commission behind it. Amen. Right, right. The Lord, I don't know if you can get a hold of this or not, but the Lord expected those 12 to go out. Amen. And have strict faith on Him. Amen. Them 12 was supposed to go out, Sister Karen. Amen. And do the work of Him. Right. Amen. And not worry about the physical but begin to worry about the spiritual because to see the Lord was beginning to prepare them because he was not going to stay any longer do y'all understand what I'm saying tonight and that's us today and you say well brother Keaton what are you talking about Jesus is going to come back and groom us for three and a half years and leave again no ma'am no sir he give us this word he give you the comforter he giving you the Holy Ghost to open your eyes Amen. And open your heart. <clears throat> Look at verses 11 through 15. Very important. And some people get offended with this, these scriptures here. I'm telling you, Sister Carrie, time is running out. And I don't believe we're supposed to fool with people that don't want Jesus. Because that's what the word just says there if you'll read it. He says, if you enter into their home and they receive you, there's a commandment right there that you and I are supposed to do. You're supposed to bless that home. Amen. And shame on you if you go into somebody's house and they receive you and they've come and they've asked you to pray for them. They've come and asked for a word and you've entered their house and you've done that work and that's all that's on your mind and you leave that home and never bless it. Amen. You have disobeyed the scripture. Can I get an amen tonight? Because the word says that you're supposed to bless the home. Amen. Why? Because they have called not you but they've called on the spirit of the Lord to come in and dwell in where they dwell. Do you understand? And because of that the Lord wants to leave them a little bit of favor. A little bit of meat. A little bit of something to live on. A little bit of rain. Do you understand? So when you begin to bless my God there's going to be something when they get up in the morning they're going to walk around in a blessing church. They're going to walk around something's different. Amen. That woman of God was here last night. That man of God was here last night. Amen. They're going to be sitting there drinking coffee. Amen. Wondering and begin to meditate and say, well, wonder why. Amen. They blessed my home after they prayed for me. Yes. Amen. amen. Because God wants to bless. He has to bless. God wants to open that door that no man can shut. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying tonight? Yeah. Amen. Open the door that I can work. Think about what I'm saying tonight. Oh, but the rest of these scriptures says that if they don't accept, you know how it is when you go to talk in the Bible? All of a sudden, people's got a deaf ear. All of a sudden, they got to go take their medicine. All of a sudden, they got to go to the grocery store. All of a sudden, things come up. Car won't crank. 
Old lady left me, husband left me, whatever. All of a sudden, all these problems. You know what the Lord said to them? You know, because I would bless them right, if they would just accept me. Come on, Come on somebody. Right, and he said, don't fool with them. Dust your shoes off and head on out. Come on now. I'm just preaching you the word. The word. And you say, well, Brother King, you, that, that's hard. That's hard. That's hard preaching. Amen. But look at verse 16. Amen. We get to it. Amen. We get a swell chest uh, when the Lord calls us to the ministry. Amen. We get sometimes we get, uh, I ain't going to say big head. Uh, amen. But we begin to feel good when the Lord, uh, amen, wakes us up in the middle of the night. Uh, amen. And he pokes and prods until you get out of the bed. Uh, amen. And you crack that Bible up when you begin to pray. My God, and what you were searching for, God gives it to you, and He gives it to you in abundance. My God, whatever it may be. But see, in verse 16, Jesus allowed them to know that I'm going to send you like sheep. My God, in the midst of wolves. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? But it never says the wolves is going to eat these sheep up. Do you hear what that? My God, I'm telling you, we're in a place tonight, church. That God, amen, is calling. God ordains. God is calling his people to go do his work. And sometimes we wonder. And sometimes, amen, look at the next two or three verses. Amen. And we wonder why the church is just kicking this out. You wonder why the church, amen, won't fellowship with another church. Amen. We wonder why these saints. We would love to know why. Amen. Why they are taking, amen, and bad mouthing this and because they don't want no closer walk. They don't, may not believe in speaking in tongues. They may not believe in healing. Amen. I've mentioned this one time before. Amen. How that church of Christ in Crestview, they had a little old preacher over by the name of Trey Poole. Amen. And I was coming to work one morning and he would come on at 5 o'clock on WJSB. I'm going to call his name because he needs to be called out. Amen. And it come right out of his mouth. Amen. He said, I don't believe in healings. He said, that's why God give us doctors. Amen. In medicine now. Because he don't heal like he healed in the Bible. And I almost flipped my truck over when I heard him say that. My God, what ignorance. Amen. And I just got into back into the church. And I knew when I was a sinner that I knew a God that was able to move. When I was a sinner, I seen demons cast it out as a child. When I was just young, I seen people healed. I knew that there was a God out there, amen. There was a miracle working God. Praise the Lord. But you wonder why. But I got that just take and want to sell you out. But if you, when you look at verses 19, amen, I know I'm going a little bit fast and I I thought I would teach it, but it's all right. Go back and read some of it. It'll do you good. Hey, man, we ain't supposed to premeditate. Right, come on. Oh, yeah. Just a, <laughs> Sister Krista, we ain't supposed to premeditate. <laughs> Be just led of the Spirit. Amen. Let the Spirit, let the Holy Ghost take over. Right. The Holy Ghost is going to lead you and guide you into what? All truth. truth. Amen. It's what the word says anyway. That's what it says. If you would believe the word. Think about what I'm trying to get a hold of you tonight. Oh, but we see verse 22 that a lot of people don't like. He said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But the promise is the back end of that scripture where it says, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Do y'all see that church? Amen. My God, and I just, I don't know what it said, but when thou persecuted you in this city, flee to another, to another. For verily I say to you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel to the Son of Man become. They is such a work to do. Amen. There's never going to be a stopping point, Sister Karen. We're going to have to continue to be on the move. 
Amen. And when he was talking about persecution, amen, son's going to persecute you. Right. Brother Robert, son's going to lie on you. Right. Oh, Satan's going to do things to you that's going to blow your mind and you're going to say, where is this God at? Right. And God's going to be there the whole time. Oh, yeah. Amen. And I don't know if y'all grab that or not. Amen. But I'm telling you something. Amen. He is worthy. Yes. He is worthy yes. of his kingdom. Yeah. And he is worthy, amen, to find somebody, amen, that will hold to his name amen. and won't back up and begin to complain. Amen. But we talk about 20 verses 24, 25, amen, and 26. Amen. And this is where we get into that problem. Amen. Amen. Somebody wants to override another. Oh, the Lord has shown me such. So all of a sudden, I'm ready to strike a trot. I don't need you to teach me anymore. I don't need no more leadership. I got a hold of this thing. Amen. But that ain't what it's about. Amen. We are subject, church. We're going to answer to somebody. The Lord put somebody over us. Not, you better listen to me, not that the one above you could show both. Amen. But he put it to where we can check one another's spirit. Amen. That we would be our brother's keeper. Amen. I want you to get a hold of that, Brother Robert. I'm not going to always have my thumb on you and say, I'm your pastor and you got to do exactly what what I say because I pray for you. Amen. And I have to be sensitive to the Spirit. And let me say this to you. When you're sensitive to the Spirit, Amen, the flesh don't like that. Because I'm telling you the Spirit's going to tell you all things of what you need to know. Amen. And that's why you can say, brother and sister, you better get straightened up. You better get squared back where you need to be. Amen. Just like when I text my brother last week and I said I am troubled and I want to speak to you amen because I know the calling that's on your life amen but the blood wants to your kin folk that want to take you down a different path and let me tell you something right now the Lord called for a purpose amen and don't let flesh amen get in the way of the spirit It's going to check that. And if you love your brothers and sisters and you're praying, amen, you can go to them and allow them to know amen. that it is time, amen, that they change track. That's right. Praise the Lord. But if you look at 27, I wrote an underline. When you get in that prayer closet, he said, what I tell you in darkness, that you speak in the light. Come on. Come on, somebody. That's That's a good one. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetop. Yes. Woo! Well, that's going to take some. My God. That's going to take some separation. You're going to lose a few friends over that. You're going to lose a few brother and sister over that. Amen. Matter of fact, that's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. If you'll get in that prayer closet and let the Lord begin to minister to you and begin to open you up. Amen. If you'll be, if you'll be him. Amen. An Isaiah. If you'll be an Elijah or Elisha. Amen. If you'll be a Moses or a Daniel or a Samuel. Amen. Allow God to speak to you and you go look in the midst of Israel and say, Thus saith the Lord, because I got it from the horse's mouth. Amen. I'm going to preach what's supposed to be preached. Amen. And it's time. And that's what he said. Go tell the, 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 the lost sheep. Of, the, excuse me. I got it wrong. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. That the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. They ain't going to want to hear that because for so long, church, they've been hearing that. Amen. And look at verse 28 real quick. And it said, Fear them. Fear not them, it says, which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear who? Him. Which is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. Do y'all see that? By God, and he begins to describe in verse 29 and 30 and 31 how valuable, amen, you are. Right. He said he knows the sparrow fell. He knows how many hairs that you got on your head. Yeah. And he said you're more valuable than the sparrow. 
You're more valuable to him than a bird. And if he knows what that's going on, surely he knows the crisis in your life. He surely knows, amen, the times, amen, that Satan comes and tempts you. Amen. He knows for surely the time that the adversary comes and tries to mix it up. Amen. And tries to confuse you. But the word says that the Lord is not the author of confusion. Amen. That a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And tonight we can't be double-minded. And we can't be in confusion. If you in that place, you know that it's not of the Lord tonight, church. Because if he would look after little old Sparrow, for surely he would look after you and I. Amen. My God, in the name of Jesus, I'm about through. Y'all come on, help me out here. But it says this in verse 33, gives me chill bumps, or 32. Let us just start at 32. 32 is good. He said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, yeah, which you. is in heaven. How many times you ever just take that scripture for a moment and just think at the time, Sister Karen, it's, you might have been in the doctor's office. You might have been down there to be X. You might have been at Moulton's picking up medicine and you were a witness. And you mentioned that one name that's above all names. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus said, by the way, did y'all hear that? Yeah. The did y'all hear what she just said? Right. She mentioned my name. Think of the times. Every time you confess that name, <coughs> Brother Robert, it's in heaven. It's, he confesses it back in the heaven. Amen. The Lord. Think about it. The Lord. Look what she just done. Look what he just done. They mentioned <coughs> my name. Yes. Think about what I'm saying. I'm telling you something. Amen. If I won't fire you up, Amen. if Amen. I That's won't right. fire you up to allow you to know her. But he said in 33, this sort of bring the chills to you. But whosoever shall deny me before men, <coughs> him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Mm. And you think about that and you say, well, I've never, I don't never remember doing that. But so you <coughs> deny the Lord when you tight lipped and the Lord begins to urge you to get up. Right. And maybe you have, the Lord has urged you to go lay hands. Maybe the Lord has urged you to give a word to somebody. Maybe the Lord has urged you to get up and pray when you say, well, when, I, when that alarm clock goes off, I'll get up and pray then. Well, see, you've denied. You have denied. Think about what I'm saying. Because he wanted his name mentioned. Yes. And he said, when you do these things, or when you're in the grocery store line, and you hear the conversation above you or behind you, and they get in to some kind of church mode. And you know that they, what they're saying is not true. Or they're asking a question. Wonder how we could find out. And you want to be prim and proper. And don't want to stir the water. But you just sit there like a cold tater. Come on. You have denied him. Because he has given you the words to say. Think about what I'm saying. You've denied him. You don't even ever have to say nothing and deny him. Yeah. And that's why I don't believe it's what you wear. It's what you do. That's right. Because you can wear whatever you want to wear, but if you won't open that mouth and be a witness for him. Oh, in the name of Jesus. What do y'all think about that? <coughs> We're going to have confirmation, brother. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> God, have mercy, have mercy. The God is good. Let's go a little bit further. Amen. He said, Think not that I come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Listen to this. For I come to set a man at variance against his father, a difference, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Look at verse 36. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household, his enemies. Mm -hmm. He that loved his father or mother more than he, it, me he, it is not worthy of me. And he that loveth the son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Think about the chaos. Yeah. 
It's in people's lives today. Because in the next scripture, he said, if, if you love me, you're going to take this cross up. Right. We can't make it, church, without Jesus. That's, right. That's right. the truth. There's going to be chaos. Amen. There's going to be enemies. There's going to be treacherous right. situations. Right. There's always going to be hell everywhere going around. Right. Amen. Right. And you're either going to do one or two things. you either going to hold to the unchanging hand. Right. Amen. Or you're going to adapt to the hell ways. I mean, you gonna not not you don't sure who your friends is. Uh, you gonna not know who a thief is. Uh, I mean, you don't know who you can trust uh, or who you can't trust. Uh, amen. For these things of the chaos. Uh, amen. That's in people's lives. Uh, we've got to have Jesus uh, because when He said, "If you would take up your cross, uh, if you take not," Amen. He said, "And he that taketh not his cross uh, and follow me, he's not worthy of me." Watch this in 39. He said, He that findeth his life, amen, shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. I don't know if you can understand this. He said, He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, amen, receiveth him that sent me. Amen. I I, I look at these scriptures, and, amen, and, and, and try to hold on to, to what it's talking about, amen, because I believe with all my heart if we hold to Jesus, amen, if we if we do his will, we're going to be found worthy, amen, and I, I see some that believe this with all my heart, amen, because I have had it taught to me before, why, amen, do you preach so violent, why have you got such an anger problem? Amen. Why you uh, you preach so hard? That's what I've been targeted. Amen. I had a black minister come to me and say he they were trying to find out who I was. And he said, I asked a friend, he said, that's that hard preacher, amen, that preaches on the radio. And they wondered if I was ever going to win any souls because I preach so hard. Amen. You ain't going to win anybody preaching that hard. Who can? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Amen. When you want Jesus, you don't want the world. Amen. Oh, oh. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? And, and, and I believe that. And somebody that tries to sit back and say, well, we better not ripple the water or we're going to lose people in the church. That's what I just read to you. Them people is going to lose, amen, their lives. Amen. But the ones that's willing right now to be sold out. Amen. And I'll say it like this and I'm not being arrogant. If I got a friend, I've got one. If I don't, fine. As long as I got Jesus. And if I lose my life here, I'll surely find it one day. Amen. When he tells me to enter in. My God, I'm telling you something. That's what I'm looking for is to please him and not man. I'm not worried about these things on this earth. Amen. And I'm not worried about all these other things. I'm not trying to live by the law. I'm not trying to do a work, amen, that I will win favor from me and man. Amen. But what I'm trying to do is get this word out. Amen. That it will convict. It will take and turn people's life around. Amen. And they will take some kind of, amen, correction and get a hold of the cross tonight and have a desire to go get their sins. Amen washed away and not live in chaos and know when the enemy comes in like a flood when the enemy comes all around you as Elisha talked about my God that there is something inside of you and you know that you've got that line to heaven that you can walk cause David said it himself he said he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies and I don't know if you can understand that or not, but David had it pictured that he could sit down, amen, and have a meal, a steak and tater meal, and it'd be good to him, amen, and he didn't have to rush because he didn't know when the next spear was coming or the next sword. He was not worried about how his enemies was building up an army on this side and building up an army on this side. He said the Lord prepares him a table in the presence of his enemies yeah. and I don't know what that means to you but that lets me know I serve a big God yeah. and a mighty yeah. God I've got a confidence oh. I've got a power yeah. and an anointing do you hear what I'm saying yeah. and that's what I like tonight I know that I can lay my head down and rest oh. amen because I know he's got my back That's what 
walking in confidence. Yes. I leap while the enemy builds up against me. If you want to get arrogant with it, I want to make sure there's enough of them that it's a fair fight. My God, in the name of Jesus, ain't God good to us? Yes. Sending out the twelve. <coughs> How will you be found? He warned you in several places. Brother Elijah told me when he received the Holy Ghost at 13. <laughs> He said he went home that night and told his daddy he was going to hell if it didn't change. He said the daddy beat him for it. He said he would bring them foes in there. And your foes would be your family. The enemies would be. Think about it. But he didn't hold. He didn't take loose of that unchanging hand. He still held on to the master's hand. Mom and daddy's in church now. Pastor in church. Huh? My God. Don't tell me my God ain't real. But he said he'd be persecuted for his name's sake. I believe the word was expound that night. He took a whipping after he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because the Lord gave him vision. Give him revelation. <coughs> There's got to be change in this household. There's got to be change. I'm changed. And when I walk in, I ain't, it's, there's got to be change. My God, in the name of Jesus. Church, we serve a mighty God. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Do you want to be called tonight? Do you want to be found as one of the eleven? I won't say as one of the twelve. Jesus said, I picked 12 of you and one of you is the devil. <coughs> but if you looked at it like this, Jesus said it's better that Judas had never been born, but somebody had to betray Jesus. scapegoat. How they would pray them sins on the scapegoat and send him to the wilderness. And that's the same thing Jesus provided for them, Pharisees, with Judas. They thought that they were getting away with something. counted as one of yours, Lord. And Lord, I pray that I never deny you, Lord God. I pray that I never bring reproach against your name, Jesus. And Lord, I understand, Lord God, that I would be persecuted for your name's sake. But it's alright. I love you anyway. You're worth it all, Jesus. Lord, to be in your presence, to hear your voice, it's worth it, Jesus. It's worth it. You are a mighty Lord God, and there is none like you, Lord. There's none to compare you to. Words will not begin to explain, begin to describe who you are. I know this Bible is full of words that describes you, Lord God, but they're very short to who you really are. 
You're so magnificent. You're so mighty. You're so loving. And Lord, I just don't want to fail you. Lord, I always want to please you, Lord God. Lord God, I ask tonight, Jesus, Lord God, that you would move on each one that's here, Lord. <laughs> oh God, use them for your glory and use them for your purpose. Lord, I pray that you would give them an ear to hear your voice, Lord. Lord, give them a mind and a heart, Lord God, to do your will. Oh, mighty God, Jesus. Lord, you're mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. Oh, God, there's none like you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. We thank you tonight. Church, how blessed are we really? How blessed are we really? Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Jesus. How blessed are we? I want you to give thanks to the Almighty. Amen. I want you to recognize Him. He 
He's putting all your pieces of your puzzle back together. My God, my God, my God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God, 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 in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know you've looked upon her heart, Lord God. Jesus, Lord, everyone. Jesus, 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 J